So welcome everyone to our Chaos, Diversity and Inclusion Working Group meeting on December 2nd, 2019. We already talked about having great Thanksgiving last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, happy first Advent. Now last time, uh, Matt, you and I, we had talked about submitting to scale. I don't think we did that. At least I didn't. I think the submission closed for scale. It is closed, yes. Yeah. Not me, so, Matt. Other than, right? Sorry, what? Not me, Matt. No, Matt's now. Who is muted? Oh, yeah, I can't talk for just a moment. I just want to be listening for a bit. Yeah. Just wanted to confirm with you that you also didn't submit anything. Or did I, you? I did submit to scale. Did you submit a DNI talk? Uh, about the badging, yeah. OK, about the badging. So that's good. But not the one we talked about last week. No, I didn't. OK. That's fine. Yeah, I submitted a talk to scale, but it didn't have anything to do with metrics, I don't think. Yeah, I submitted, um, no, it was about building building community for your company's projects. I did submit um, a metrics talk to scale, but not related to DNI metrics. Cool. Okay, so we had um, the sponsorship metric is the one that we worked on last time and uh, Sole just joined in time. I'm sorry, I'm a bit late. Oh, no worries. You're just on time. We were just starting to talk about the sponsorship metric that you created uh, pull request for. Here, I can share my screen and we can walk through it together. Um, so I see you made changes. I've never seen individual changes being um, suggested like this in the interface. So I can go through and say, yes, update commit this change. Oh, I do not have permission to mush, push to this repository. Are you logged in? I, yes, yeah. you are. Okay. I can, sorry, I can see that you are. So um, let, let, me, let me look on my end quickly. Um, I, think, um, I think it's because I've had some of these changes already in a commit, but from my end, that the user interface um, basically, ha like it, it, it won't work. Just give me one sec, OK? Yep. Um, I just wanted to see if there were any other <laughs> that would have worked. Yeah. Uh, let, let me first try to see, because I believe I have already something uh, added to the commit, uh, like to the, uh, like I already have staged things uh, that basically I need to commit from my end. And, and the UI is just not too aware of the distinction here. Um, they're, okay. still, they're still developing it. So um, so I can share the screen from my end, uh, if you don't mind, because because I know I've already had the, um, and then after it's done, we can figure out why it wasn't working. Oh, I'm not too worried about why it wasn't working. I just want to get the metric. All right, so. Yeah, so, so you're good with the changes. Yes. Okay, so oh, I was actually able to do. Yeah, so I do add to batch. Okay. So they're just three. Got it. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, 
Don't worry yep. about the text. We're not keeping a clean log. All right. So I think, yeah. So from your end, uh, I mean, you've reviewed this. You should have been able to commit. <laughs> and I, you know, after all, I should be the one who's getting like an error message. Uh, maybe we can now switch back, and then you, uh, you should see whether we should land this or not. I, I'm sorry, I came in late, so. I missed that part of the discussion. Um, oh. I'll change this request. I'm just going to say resolve, I believe. I'm resolving the conversation here right now. But it oh. looks like the, the DCO check failed. Well, probably on the last one. Yeah, um, you have yeah. to amend, amend the commit with the sign off. Um, yeah, so, so um, yeah, let me do that quickly. OK. Yeah, Sala is one of the few I know who know how to fix a pull request like this. Mm -hmm. One time <laughs> a lot I did. of people just create new pull requests altogether. <laughs> I've gotten better at fixing them since I started working on Kubernetes because they're super picky and squashing commits. And I've spent a lot of time in Git rebase. Yeah. So what, what this changes is one to add the sponsorship metric. Um, the question was how effective are longtime members who sponsor people in supporting diversity and inclusion in communities? And this is the, let's just open the document here. This is the uh, metric that we've worked on for now over a year and that we have reviewed and revised at the Open Source Summit North America. And now we put it into the new template and revised the last week or last two weeks? I think last week. And so the proposal is to get this merged. Um, any questions on this? No, it looks good to me. Yeah, were there any lingering concerns from last week or was it just giving it time uh, one was giving it time, um, and the other is just putting it into Markdown, which we worked through uh, okay. asynchronously over the last two weeks. Okay. So as soon as the DCO sign-off is fixed, we can merge it, yeah. which is super exciting. Yeah. Um... Do you mind sharing the same link you shared the last time for me to get started with this? Uh, like oh, no. I see. Um, this was in the governance repo, I think, in the governance repo in the contributing markdown. That's the one I always share. You should yeah. just be able to do a, a git commit amend and yeah. then force push it. Yeah, we're we're good. Okay. Yeah. See, I use a GUI. Um, yeah, uh, long, long time ago, I used to use the command line. I was like a DOS person at some point, you know. <laughs> and yeah, so but but then eventually, you know, uh, it became very hard for me to not make mistakes in the command line. So we all use what works best for us. Okay, that's good. Now the chat, the check passes. Yep. We're all set. Excellent. Thank you very much for all of your work, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, like it feels like I'm cheating because everybody else did the work. I just did the sign off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so I, I wanted to add, you know, co-authored co by, and I think it's a good practice moving forward that if we're editing elsewhere, we keep a list of everyone who's been editing that document. Mm -hmm. So if we're moving it to a commit, like we're doing a commit, we do a co-authored by and we add the GitHub users, um, you know, for who, who we're working on the doc 
And this way, everybody's mentioned for traceability. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Are you just suggesting, where do you suggest to put this, Allah, in the released metric? Or do you want to actually add a heading that captures like, this? Like in the released metric, since we're writing in Google Docs what will be marked down, then we can do like a HTML style comment at the top. And anyone who's been editing would just make sure they would, that we have their uh, name and uh, I think the email they use to commit. Um, and so, like signed off by, if you do the same format with co-authors, um, co -authors, um, and we'll look it up, you know, uh, but, but it does exist. And then GitHub uh, actually associates those who are co-authors with that commit as, as you know, uh, um, contributors to the commit itself. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, the other thing we do is we also take all of those names and put them on the list of contributors on the main yeah. uh, main page in the repo. So, so yeah. that's a good practice to have to be able to be able to to be able to track what people, which ones people worked on. I think that's great. And it shows in insights and you know contributors. All the all the dynamic um, stats are updated to reflect that these many commits were due to those many contributors. Um, and, and so it's good for, for everything, you know, we don't manually do as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I updated this in the tracking spreadsheet. This is now ready. Is that right? Is that what we're calling it? We still need to merge it. Oh, okay. I'll merge it real quick, but then yes, it will. Be. <laughs> I'm not gonna unready it <laughs> and then re-ready it based on a merge. <laughs> okay. Merged. Now it's ready. Okay. I didn't do anything. It's still ready. So yeah, let's go to the, our tracking document. Now that we are done with this metric. Yeah, um, so there's one thing I wanted to do um, in the tracking document. Um, instead of manually formatting existing sheets, I wanted to copy the first sheet and um, move the data over to it. Now, that might affect history. Um, so anyway, so let, let's consider those options uh, as we talk about it. I don't think we care about the history in this document, do we? No. No, it's just to help us orient ourselves when we're about ready to do a release. Without it, it's really unwieldy. Yeah, because I mean, you can always make mistakes when you're copying formatting, um, but you can also make mistakes when you're copying data. Anyways, let, yeah, let, let's no, Don't worry about the history. Yeah, um, so uh, do, uh, I, like, how do we go about it? Uh, do I share or does somebody else? Share. In terms of moving the template over to the other, like evolution risk value, so what you're talking okay. about? Yeah, just the last go ahead, um, and then because because I want to tell you guys what I will have to do in the existing sheets to prevent making uh, overwriting mistakes um, as I as I move things over. So maybe I can share um, just to get a go ahead from everyone. Yeah, sounds good. Sure. Yeah. All right. So. Um, so after after um, you know the first sheet um, view view statics and I did this this is not like final or permanent or anything but it's um, because as I went through the other sheets um, especially this one um, I discovered that they kind of have like more columns and so I figured, okay, we want to we wanna have a, a, a reasonable amount of columns that people don't need to add new ones. Um, and so um, this column being the template, if it's going to be permanently there, then I thought, okay, let's say that when you, when you update the template, you just put the version that, um, you know, that, your, that your template is with. And no version means nobody edited this since we updated this column. Um, you know, if you enter something um, 
off, then it will just say you have to, you know, it just does that, but it, it can allow you to enter another value. Uh, it only gives you a warning, really. That's all. Um, you know, um, the title was too large. So the column was taking too much space because of the title. And then under it was why. Um, it, it was eating up space for remarks and another column, which is the contact person. Um, this comes from, I believe, value. Yeah, assigned to. They have that uh, column assigned to. Um, so if we're going to harmonize all the columns across the sheets to prevent, you know, the sheets from being um, from being restrictive and to prevent them from from being overly, um, you know, like people just doing um, more columns and then you know we run into conflicts of what was meant by something. Um, so anything that is in contact implies get to that person first. Uh, do you want to leave it as contact or assigned to or point person? I think it's fine how it is with contact. Yeah, and then links and other comments, they all can be in this one cell. Yeah, that's good. Yep. Or do we want to add a, a column that says yeah. the link? Because if you have a comment and you want to add a link, I'm not sure you can do those uh, in the same cell. I think the comment will be the link. Let's Which keep it simple. Yeah, I think this is these temp, um, these sheets have kind of reduced. I mean, what you have here is extremely helpful because they've kind of reduced down to really that first column, which is whether they're ready or not to be part of the release because that signals to Kevin. Then obviously the metric name being on the new template is critical. Not critical, it's, it's important to understand. Um, I think those are really the three primary things that we need for release. I would say the columns D and E have a tendency of being filled out more kind of during the work. Yeah. Okay. So um, those are good. All right, because because I mean it doesn't hurt if we split C into two smaller columns. There's width for it. Uh, one of them would be template. The other one would be PR. It's also used just to add the link to the PR when it's being worked on, or the doc or something. No. Okay. Done. No more. No more nagging. You know, yeah. I think this is great. Retreat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, if anything. I would maybe even combine remarks and contact, but that's. I think it's fine the way it is. Yeah. 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 So, so when it says not yet for men mentorship, which is released in V two, I assume that this is V one template, right? Yes, it's still V one. Oh, did I miss one? Yeah, we checked it last week, and it was still version one metric. Okay. All right. So let's see how that works out. Yeah, obviously, I need to set it to V1. Um, all right, so um, so I assume everything else that is not marked with yes was V1 as well. Um, so one of the things that we have, so right now, the coloring is ready for next release and released. So and I see that some of them, like family friendliness, was released, but then it moved to the new template. So now it's ready for release, right? Mm -hmm. Is that how I'm supposed to be reading that? Uh, which one? Family friendliness. So I'm looking that was at, at the top. Oh. Um, Keep going. Can, you, can you say the row number? Because oh, oh, yeah, okay. like yeah. Uh, this one, uh, it's ready for release, the second template, um, you know. So really, so then in that case, mentorship, row 41. Yeah. It's released, but it it's not actually ready for the next release yet, is how I'm reading that. Correct. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know how to read that, so I'm not sure what you guys were um, getting from that. I personally still am confused about it. Um, does it mean that you revised it for V2 and you released the V2, but you're using the V1 template, or does it mean that it was released in V1 and then it would not be relevant um, now? It means we released it in V1 and we still need to update the template for the next release. Ah, oh, okay, makes sense. So everything else that is considering has not ever been released at this point. Correct. Okay. That's See, not it's true. Fine. Oh, considering, yes. I'm sorry. Anything that's marked considering. Correct. Yeah. Sorry. Wait, I summarized what everything means. I just did not understand. That. I just added a remark. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm complete. Like, I'm, I, I was able to summarize the comments on top, right? Up here. This is good. It just it did not mean what it, what it read when I wrote it. So, in well, my I, head. Add, I added a comment to help clarify. Okay. Ah, right. So that means those here would not be V1. Um, put my, I'm going to put myself on updating that one is how I would read that, correct? Like yeah. The contact person, I'll update it to new template. So, so everything that is not pending and, and more is really no template at this point. That's correct. Good. That, that now makes a lot more sense. Um, yeah. Sure, it was what it was implying, but I just completely understood it differently. OK, good. Um, Thanks, Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so, so um, yeah, I'm going to carry over the formats. I'm not going to um, replace the sheets. Um, thinking about okay. it, it makes more sense that way. OK. So, OK. OK. Uh, just while we are on this, uh, can we look at row one, please, and make sure the description matches? Because um, we had changed how we used the sheets. Yeah. So, so I, I think this kind of summarizes it. Um, like it, it was. It's like centered and nice. And, you know. Yeah. I, no, I think it's good right there. I just wanted to see if anyone else um, had comments about the description since we just revised it. Is this clear to everyone? Um, yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, I think it's ready to move the formatting over to everyone else. How did you make the rows, uh, the columns next to E disappear? Oh, uh, like you select and then you just say hide. So if you have, if you select everything onwards and then you use the drop down and you select hide, it just hides everything onwards. Oh, huh. okay. so yeah, that's cool. All right, so yeah, I'll I'll move this over today. Um, Thanks, Ella. Well, thank you. So, from a diversity and inclusion perspective, um, I think we are we are doing really good. There are a few metrics that are in progress that we might be able to push over the finish line before the end of the year. Um, we already finished all of the ones in event diversity. So <laughs> pat on our backs, we're doing great. Which ones um, do you want to do next? Um, we did documentation at the workshop in San Diego. So I think it would be great to have that um, also be part of the next release. And what about, so documentation, like row 54? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then what about um, 
a couple that have, well, actually just one, row 33. 33 is uh, one that I would very much like to get done. Just because it has an associated pull request? Yeah, but that pull request was rejected at the time. Okay. Why would, do you remember why? Yes, because there were several things in the pull request that uh, Emma commented on that needed to be changed. And I okay. never went back to actually make those changes. I see, okay. Okay. Um, also contribution type is um, one that might have to be moved to common metrics. Okay. In what category? I see, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don, so do you okay. remember that conversation? Uh, vaguely, I, I was out. So I think I saw part of the conversation on, uh, on something else. Um, this is something we struggle with in the diversity and inclusion group, right? Because on the one hand, there, it might make sense to have a contribution type metric that's focused on how how this impacts inclusion, how, um, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not articulating myself very well. Um, I was just looking at the, at the pull request. Yeah. You know, kind of the question, do we recognize all contribution types in equal proportions? So like the common metric, the common working group, it would be, you know, like, what are the contribution types? And it would be more, sort of more atomic. Whereas I would see needing to have a metric like this in diversity and inclusion because you know how do we how do we recognize them how do the different types of contributions impact how inclusive the project is does that make sense yep it okay. does so i think the core of what are types of contributions i think we need to move that to the common working group and then we can have a derived metric here in dni mm -hmm. Yeah, we agreed. Use that metric. That makes sense. We can tee that up for the next uh, common meeting, which is not this week. No, next no. week. That's right. Okay. Okay. To me, looking at this list, board 47, board council diversity. Yeah. Might be approachable. I'm going to pull that up. Okay. So we have text in here. Where? In our markdown file. I'll put it in the chat. So maybe it's just a matter of putting it in the new template, revising it, and then this could be our metric for today. Yeah, I mean, it's already close <laughs> in terms of template. Yep. I'll put it in a Google Doc. Okay. One second.
So you should all have the link. I have it in the chat and in our minutes document. Mm -hmm. So you can start working on it. Matt Snell, you can make the changes directly. Okay. Yeah. That's probably it. You're, you're talking to yeah, I'm in a meeting. Because I don't think that this is going to have filters or visualizations or tools providing the metric. I just put the template in the chat just so people. Yep. I just cleaned up the data collection strategies, removed the duplicates. Okay. Look at us, took us four minutes to clean it. <laughs> the easiest thing ever. All right. Um, so oftentimes the objectives are written more like the description. Yeah. Do you feel like from a data collection standpoint, there should be something more than just observing it from the project web page, especially if, um, I mean, because there, there are loads of not obvious by looking at people, uh, things to think about when it comes to diversity and inclusion. And it seems like maybe, maybe something, sorry, I was thinking out loud, maybe something around asking for a you know, asking the board chair for a report of the diversity of the, to, to catch um, sort of, I don't know, I don't know what you call them, invisible. Yep. Would you want it from the board chair or would you want a self-report from the board members? Maybe just say ask the board for a report of the diversity of the board. Yeah. Yeah, 
I added the. <laughs> oh, I see. You added it to the one above. Okay, that makes sense. That I like it there better, actually. Yeah. And then we can link out to our. Um, to our diversity demographics table. Okay, anything else? Someone remove none from the resource section? Normally we had just left them blank. Okay. Unless I look at the metrics that I authored and it says none. So. For example, speaker demographics, I'm looking at that right now. Let's say that. None. You can put none if you want. <laughs> I just don't like headings without anything in there. I, I, love, I love headings with nothing in them. What are we gonna do now? <laughs> <laughs> well, how about this? I got my none in speaker demographics. You can have your nothing in board council diversity. <laughs> All right, no, this looks good. Okay. Maybe the real answer is we should get better at having references. Probably so. <laughs> I've been looking for the past 10 or so minutes for references for this um, specific metric and it's very difficult to find them. Yeah, this is why we don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> Could we link out to the OpenStack report since they have this in their report? Do they? I think so. That would be a good candidate. Yeah. Yeah, OpenStack Board of Directors, they have thirteen percent of the board was female. Hmm. Yeah, that would be a good thing to link to as an example. I found a page from the Linux Foundation. I'm not sure if it's too relevant, but it does say that six of the twenty two board members are women, um, versus the average twenty percent. Yeah, please do add that link. There we go. That's one way to solve the none versus blank dilemma. <laughs> Actually, put something in there. <laughs> okay, I'll create a pull request. Pull request 244. You're going to put it in the spreadsheet? Yep, I also put it in the meeting minutes. Thanks. Yep. 
Thank you. Of course, you're welcome. So you marked that as pending? Yes, until the PR is merged. So for rows 22, 25, and 26, those are also marked as pending? OK, then Do we? maybe we should review those. Are they PRs? I don't know. I don't, well, there are no open PRs, I know that. So no, so no they are not. <laughs> so then we should demote them to uh, in progress. Maybe. In progress. Okay, can we do documentation next? Yeah. I don't know if we've made much progress on documentation since we talked about it at ChaosCon and started work through it in the workshop. Um, but this was the group that I was sitting in, and the challenge we kept having as we were um, as we were working through it is the difference between what makes good documentation and what makes um, your documentation help with uh, diversity and inclusion. So. So we kept ending up with things in this document that were more about how to write documentation mm -hmm. as opposed to how to write documentation that supports diversity and inclusion. I see. You see what I mean? I do. I don't know if that's still the case in this, but, but I just remember that's what we struggled with. Yeah. Has there been anything on this? Sala, you have something too? Uh, yeah, like this is actually one of my um, eventual areas like it's it's always been an area of interest for me documentation um, that would actually be accessible um, like um, yeah so I was distracted a little bit in the spreadsheet when, when you guys were talking so I kind of lost my train of thought um, yeah but um, it, it's funny because we really don't have a good structured way to write documentation um, that can be made accessible. Uh, you know, um, being able to translate documentation is, is not as hard as being able to interleave, um, you know, other forms of communicating the same message. Um, and um, so, so like, like for me, that's one of my, my areas of interest, like Markov has been really trying to eliminate obstacles I personally have. Um, so I guess within this group, are, are we talking about documentation here as the convention of using Markdown and readme files on GitHub, or are we talking about like tooling and other things? I personally don't know. I think it's whatever we decided it should be at this point. Yeah, so maybe it helps if I caught up with everyone else where, where I was distracted here and I forgot to catch up with you. Uh, like, w w what are you looking at when you're having that conversation? Sorry, like I'm having one of my moments. <laughs> I think it can be defined in any direction is what I'm hearing Don say. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I mean, the, these are things we need to decide, I think is what I'm, what I'm saying. We, with the documentation, I, do you have the, because uh, we're looking at a document right now. Yeah, like which okay. link, the one we're looking at, like I don't have the minutes open, I just discovered, I forgot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
it's in the chat. Okay. So uh, yeah, let me let me get there. Because um, we made a fair bit of progress on it, um, but there's still a lot of work, I think, and a lot of cleanup that needs to happen. So we're talking about the doc in, in under documentation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah sorry. About that. I guess it helps not to mute my mic because then I know subconsciously I can be distracted and then I forget to catch up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think when we're talking about diversity and inclusion for accessibility, um, let me first change my user account because it's logging in with the wrong Google account every time. Um, what, what, I, what I've been hitting more frequently um, is this idea that accessibility is about um, making sure it's screen reader friendly um, and uh, font size and color contrast. Um, there is actually an updated specification for accessibility. Um, I mean, if documentation and collaboration tools um, are screen readable, um, and, and you can zoom in and zoom out and make sure there's enough color contrast, these are all things that if you do proper web page construction and proper document structures, these are all things that tools do um, they don't close the gap between a person collaborating with another person. Um, if they have um, different conventions due to different mechanics of collaboration, um, the mechanics are a function of um, what, 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 is, what is easy for them to do based on how they interface, um, you know, like what interface they're using. Um, and based on their own rhythm, their cognitive and mental um, rhythm. Um, so, so when we're talking about BMI and documentation, that's, that's one of the biggest pain points I have personally. Um, I hardly can learn anything if I read the documentation. Um, I have to learn by finding ways around documentation um, because Although the documentation may be visible to me, um, the patterns of assuming that I use cognitively because of my ASD and because of the difference in pace that I have because of other um, aspects like visual processing, um, they kind of make me focus on a different aspect of the message and I usually end up finding mistakes in documentation that nobody else was troubled with. Um, but it, it's only because I was more thorough because I couldn't rely on my assumed convention of, ah, that's a mistake. You know, for me, a mistake has to prove that it's a mistake. Uh, I cannot just go with the um, practice of convention. You know, my practice is different, um, and, 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 and the popular practice uh, is only popular because it's accessible uh, to more people, but it's not the only um, convention that, you know, people w will rhyme to. And I think the word rhythm here is really uh, important because it, it suggests that having two rhythms um, is the nature of things. There is no right rhythm and wrong rhythm. Um, so does that at all help, or, or was I just completely on the tangent? <laughs> Sorry. No, I think there are a couple of things in there that were really helpful. Uh, first one is that you mentioned um, an accessibility specification. Yes. I'm, um, I'm, if I'm you could drop that in the, in the references, that would be awesome. But the other, you know, the other thing you recommend, or the other thing that you mentioned was, you know, like your different approach to it because of, because of ASD. And I was listening to a presentation recently that was talking about how, um, it was basically talking about, you know, people who are not 
neurotypical um, mm -hmm. and how general improvements to the documentation help help some of them more and there are ways to improve documentation for people who who are not neurotypical that also improve it for everyone else yeah and i feel like we didn't we we don't really touch on that anywhere in this document and it's probably a good thing to to address and i wonder if there are some i wonder if there are some resources that we can reference on that as well yeah so i'm, I'm trying to get this pack i know the revision for, for the spec was, you know, somewhere in my history. So let me see if I can get that first. Drop that link in there, and then um, Yeah, so, um, so I'm going to add it uh, to the minutes um, uh, references. Uh, I think this is the W3P. Um, so, so WCAG is the is the uh, body that uh, releases. I'm sorry, that's the acronym for the spec. Um, and version two was released in 2008. Uh, version 2.1 was released um, in um, 2018. Um, now, there are different definitions, but let, let me first gather my thoughts. Yeah, the word cognitive in um, version two appears four times. And it appears seven times in the new one. Um, and I think I found, yes. Okay, so, so I have a, a link that really um, shows the, ch the, the significant change here. Um, so I, I'll paste this also in uh, Zoom. So it's like the point of comparison. Um, and I, I can share my screen, or you guys can open the link on your end. It's, um, I guess. So, so yeah, there's a lot to go through, right? So maybe the question that I have in the last two minutes is what you've been talking about, Sala, seems a little bit different than what's in the current documentation document. Mm -hmm. So the question would be is, is there room for both of these kind of ways of thinking about documentation or should we separate it out? Does that make sense? It's a journey. I think I think we're going to enrich the um, the because I mean the pivot forces us to reconsider what we call accessibility, um, and I, I don't think it's an enhancement to the existing notion, but rather it forces us to wonder, you know, um, making something bigger. Uh, or more clear in documentation. Um, and versus making 
documentation friendly for collaboration. I don't know what to. Um, yeah. So 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 we're we're talking about this affecting other other parts as well. Yeah, I think my comment is that like in the the documentation document like an hour ago was trying to capture the conversations from chaos con in san diego and it looks like kind of looking at that document it looks like it's based on how to build documentation that is enabling um a broad set of people to join the project that kind of looks like that's the narrative that came out of san diego mm -hmm. And what you're proposing is um, is slightly different than that, which it, I don't, that's not a bad thing. It's just different than that. So the question is, is does this documentation document contain both the ability of documentation to kind of increase the size and diversity of a community, as well as being available to um, people with a variety of different cognitive approaches, like, are those the same? Do we keep those together? Do we, do we have two um, metrics? Can I try to re-elaborate on this so you tell me whether I got it right or not? Yeah. So one way for considering, sorry, can we go over time or take this to a separate Zoom? If, if that's I'm going to have to, I am going to have to drop off too. We have a bunch of visitors in town, so. Okay, so can, can we continue next week? Yeah, okay, that, yeah, yeah. Same, same time next week, yeah. Yeah, so it, if you have a thought that you want to get out, be my guest. Yeah, I, I, I think documentation should, can, 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 can function as a way to, you know, uh, code of conduct, governance, docs, all of these are a way to make, the, to make a community more inclusive. Yep. That's one way of looking at accessibility uh, and diversity uh, and inclusion in, in um, documents. But the other way is how we, what tools we use to document and the style we choose to write things out, would that make it more or less accessible for people with different yes. accommodations? Um, the last, yeah, the first part allows, allows us to edit what the definition of disability means because uh, I think it's, it's a faulty definition to say a disabled person is disabled and using documents, uh, you know, an enabled or disabled person, that's irrelevant, but disabled because the document is making you feel disabled, unable to access it, that's a general rule of accessible documentation. Uh, you make someone feel disabled, whether or not they have a special circumstance or a disability in their life, that's, that's secondary from the concept of inclusion. If your document is inclusive and it penalizes someone, then it's disabling them. That's actually on, on your... Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah, I think it sounds like we need to diff, uh, create different metrics for these different areas. I think it's sounding like that too, quite, quite reasonably. That's kind of where I'm leaning to, so. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I do have to drop off. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.